everybody and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's episode we're going to be uh, practicing some drilling within the C-beam. I'm going to use a couple of different pieces of material. Uh, the first one I'm going to try is a piece of 6061 aluminum. I got this one from Zometri. It's one of the many uh, pieces I got in their cutoff box I get. I think that's a pretty good value, 50 bucks for 25 pounds of various pieces of bar and round stock. Uh, I like doing that because you get a lot of different material for uh, projects. Um, let's model up the part real quick here. It's a really simple part. It's two and a half by uh, uh, let's see here. one, one inch. 2.5 inch and it is six inches long uh, just for consistency sake uh, it's a change of material to aluminum not sure if it really matters for this but it's just good practice to have uh, let's go with that there we go all right now we have our piece of stock made now we just need to lay it out in cam. All right, now we're gonna stick some points on this for the sketch to draw out our uh, hole locations. Uh, so first I'm gonna start with the construction line and that way I can just have some uniform lines here. Uh, let's make that 15 millimeters in. We'll do another one. Let's see. 15 millimeters from that side, and then we'll do one in the middle. Plan here is to make uh, a few different holes, so point, start there, make that 15 millimeters, and then we'll make a rectangle tool path here, so we'll select that point. Uh, we're going to go down three, so it's going to be the difference between those. And uh, let's cancel this real quick, figure what that distance is real quick. Alright, so it looks like 16.75. Alright, that's not a problem. This is one of the things when you deal with uh, converting from Imperial the metric is sometimes you run into some issues. All right, that way I want to have let's go with eight holes with a 16.75 spacing. And of course they're going the wrong way. So we minus that. There we go. And then for this one, we do 16 point. And we got our spacing. So now we've got our holes. And now I'm going to use the hole tool. After I finish the sketch. And We'll start with this one. Our first tool we're going to use is a looks like a one eighth inch drill bit. So we're just going to do a standard simple hole. We're going to do it. Um, this is one inch thick, so let's go 0.75 inches in. Diameter is 0.125 inch. All right. So now those holes have been uh, made. The next operation we're going to do is first we got to turn the sketch back on. Another set of holes. Um, this set will be just a second. I will check the drill bit I chose. Um, this looks like a 1364 drill bit. So we'll do the same thing, 0.75 inches. 
by, and this time we'll do a fractional, so 13 divided by 64 times 1 inch. And I forgot to convert that to millimeter for millimeters to inches on the depth. So we'll just do that real quick. So 0.75 inch. There we go. And then the final cutter we're going to do is a 3 or 15 16 actually to create the tap size hole for 30 and 3 eighths drill or uh, taps. So that. Sometimes that little dialogue gets in the way, which is kind of irritating. So you gotta switch it around sometimes. And we'll keep the same depth. Actually, we gotta change that 0.5 inch. And that is a. What number is that again? 5 16. 5 16 times 1. Alright, so that's our three sets of holes. Uh, let's go over to the CAD space and start planning this out. Uh, off screen I redid the orientation just to make it easier for the cam layout so I don't have to rotate axes. Um, I'm going to make it for setup, stock, we're going to do a fixed size stock. It is 6 inches on the X axis. Depth is 2.5 inches with a height of 1 inch. We need to set up a couple tools. I believe I have some of these tools set up already, so I'm going to look at my tool library. And okay, I've got, there it is. And just looking for the tools that I have. So I have a 1364th in here already. So that tool set up. The, 5 16th is set up and so is my eighth inch tool. What I don't have is my center drill. So I'm going to make one of those right now. I'm going to tool. We just got to look for we're going to use as center drill but we're going to use as a spot drill. Um, this is a quarter inch 5 inch center drill. Cutter is in inches. It's a two flute. I don't understand why this always defaults to three flute, but reasons. Alright, that is 0.25 inch. Tip diameter is 0.125 inch. It's that. It is of the side we're using, the workable side is about. 2.5 inches. They are double sided center drills, so it's a little wonky, but on average it's about two and a half. So we'll put stick it out two inches. There'll be actually more meat on the inside, but two inches seems like a good number for the stick out. On the shoulder, we can leave that alone. We can leave that alone. That can be left alone, and that can be left alone. All right. And now we got to edit that for a second here because I forgot to add the tool holder. I just use a generic one. It's just mostly for simulation and for me it's consistency. I also have to change the RPM up to 8000 because that's the minimum my spindle can spin. So, And I have to make sure flood coolant's on because if you remember in the first video I mentioned that I use the relay that flood coolant normally is triggered off of to activate my VFD. All right, now that we have our tool set, we can start uh, setting up some setups for the holes. So we're going to start with the eighth inch hole first. This one I'm going to make two different setups for. The first four holes I'm going to try to drill without a center drill spot on it. And then the other four will be with a spot drill. Um, for the remainder of the rest of them, I'm going to spot drill it, so there's going to be um, only four holes in this entire jig right here that won't be spot drilled at all. And that's just a test to see if I can do with one eighth, just to see if I can save some time. As for the rest of them, they're going to need it because obviously the drills are a lot bigger. I'm also thinking of doing a pilot hole 
on the 516th with the 1 8th just to create a spot for the chisel to not be trying to push into it when I'm going high speeds. I'm just trying to give it the best chance it can have. Alright, now I'm going to show you how to do it properly. Um, here is the eighth inch holes that we did. Uh, selected the eighth inch drill, flood coolant, 8,000 RPMs. I uh, did uh, 50 millimeters per minute of plunge feed rate. Um, retract is 1,000 millimeters per minute. And then it auto calculated the surface feed for me. As far as the geometry, instead of selecting midpoint plane uh, points, you just select the outer rim of the hole you want to drill, and Fusion's smart enough to figure out how to actually mill down to the bottom of that hole that you selected within the CAD. Um, I left everything else blank. Um, it seemed to be fine. Heights, nothing really surprising there. I do give myself a little extra uh, retract height. I just don't want to accidentally crash my tool on some work holding or something. I break enough end mills as it is. I don't need to break any over silly things. Um, the cycle type, I went with a deep drilling solution. As I mentioned earlier, uh, these are pretty deep holes for an eighth inch drill bit, so it makes sense. And it also adds the plunging and the pecking. And I selected one millimeter for all three of the options. I did not do a dwell time because I don't have through uh, tool cooling. So what will happen is if you just let it dwell in the hole, you can heat up the part, heat up the tool, and you can potentially chip weld, and you don't want that. That's just asking for bad times. Um, as for the other ones, the only big difference between that hole set and the rest is on the pecking, I only wrote down a millimeter, and how I did that is I just changed the heights, and the bottom height I selected as the top of the stock and just took a minus one millimeter peck into it. And that's all you really need to do to give it a nice little divot. This will allow you to machine the rest of it on the mill, or if you want to take the part off afterwards, if you don't feel comfortable actually milling on there with the drill. It'll give you a nice little starter hole for your drill press if that's how you want to do it. So I did that. And then the only other big ones is probably going to be the chamfers. And that's just because each of the diameter holes needed a different depth for the chamfer bit to engage and clean up the burrs. And that's really about it for this. Um, I'm going to inset some video. i watch some chip therapy here and come back with some conclusions when we're done.
as you can see uh, in the examples here, the C-beam hasn't had any issues drilling into this uh, aluminum. Um, as you see on the last of the 5 16 holes, I didn't even do a pilot drill of a 1 8 inch drill. The only thing I did was spot drill it and it plowed right through it. However, in the future, I didn't like the chatter I was receiving on that operation there. So like the other seven before it, I would just pilot drill it and there was hardly any chatter at all when I did that. So I think that's what I would do for the future for that strategy. And then the, these are just the chamfers. It didn't take very long, it was about maybe 30 seconds. And here's the final uh, part. Um, after I deburred it and all that, I decided to try my hand at a uh, face milling and it worked pretty good. I used a new cutter I bought that has uh, three triangular inserts. I screwed up a little bit on the right hand side because I didn't have a very good uh, holding right there. So it rose up a couple of times and it caused that uh, cross cutting and chatter. But overall it looked great and it, that would have gone away if I hadn't messed up my uh, my securing of it. I just kind of threw it back in last minute just to, just to try it. At that point I was already happy with the test so at this point I was just testing other parts that I needed to test. Um, I was per pretty happy uh, as you can see uh, you can drill relatively easily with the C-beam. Uh, you just have to watch your your peck speeds and your peck depth and the only other thing I would say is I probably would not drill a hole larger than about a 3 8 diameter. Anything more than that and you're looking to, well, have some problems. And anything above probably an eighth inch I would go ahead and pre-drill with at least an eighth inch just so you get a lot of good contact and that center drilled out so you don't have that chisel effect going on where you're trying to grind the aluminum with the non-sharp point. Uh, when I did that on the on the 5 16 it worked. I got a lot of vibration. I'm, not, I'm sure it showed up in the video a little bit on that last uh, hole I caught with the 5 16 But the rest you notice it wasn't vibrating at all. It just poured chips out and it looked great. So recommend it. Um, if you have any questions just hit me up in the comments and I will see what I can do for you. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next week. Goodbye.